As Russians seek a haven for assets, access to U.S. real estate won't be easy. The nation's wealthy citizens are trying to move their money abroad, but sanctions will make doing so a challenge. This is by Keith Larson and Rich Bachman. Says, news reports from Russia this week show people lining up at the ATMs and banks in a rush to withdraw cash as sanctions from Europe and United States plunge the Russian rubble to record levels, record lows, excuse me. Some are now seeking to move their money overseas. An attorney who has worked with Russian buyers said many wealthy pe- people, not oligarchs, but people of considerable means, are trying to frantically get their money out of their country, out of the country and into real estate. He said, I've had several people reach out to me. What can they buy? The attorney said, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to get their money out. Transferring funds out of Russia and into America real estate will be difficult for a number of reasons. The U.S. has already sanctioned several oligarchs as well as Russia's two largest banks and the EU cut seven Russian banks out of the SWIFT, a global financial messaging system that facilitates money transfer between banks. Faced with the threat of a run of the country's banks, Russian Central Bank has more than doubled its key interest rate and announced the capital controls temporarily banning brokers from selling securities held by foreign citizens. But Russians who have the means will likely seek to move money abroad. There are no sanctions or laws that expressly prohibit Russians from buying real estate in the U.S. And some financial sanctions have yet to take full effect. U.S. banks still have weeks before they must cut their ties with Russia's Largest bank, Superbank. In times of instability, real estate investors look for a flight to safety. For years, Miami's luxury real estate market was fueled in part by South American investors looking for a hedge against currency fluctuations. Venezuelan elites have used shell companies to funnel money into luxury properties in New York and South Florida, including high-end condos in Sunny Isles Beach and equestrian estates in Wellington and West Palm Beach County. While Russian buyers have spent millions on trophy condos and townhouses in Manhattan, Russian investment is not a major part of New York's commercial real estate. MSCI real estate John Costello told NBC he could identify six Russian headquartered organizations and people with $1.2 billion in U.S. commercial real estate. A drop in the bucket compared to the $809 billion in commercial real estate sold last year alone. But some are projecting an uptick in investment. We, the U.S., are like are going to see an inflow of financing from Russia, said Casey Michael, a journalist and author of the book American Kleptography. Much of this money will make its way into real estate, Mitchell said, adding that people in the neighboring countries such as Kavistan and Azerbaijan whose economies are linked to Russia's, could also look to invest in property abroad. Scheitzelman, an attorney in Miami office of Schutz and Bowen, who focuses on international disputes, said he also expects Russian money to come to the U.S., especially to Miami. In South Florida, the market is really hot, he said. Not only is it a safe asset, but there is potential for money to be made. Even if the transfers are legal, U.S. banks will likely be wary of accepting money from Russian bank. In light of the know your customers principle in U.S. banking rules, banks could decide it's simply not worth the hassle of additional due diligence, according to the experts. Everyone who comes to you is a potential risk, said Andrew Idleman, an attorney and anti-money laundering expert with first Idleman, David, and Joseph in Miami. Still, Miami Russians also hold accounts in Europe and overseas. It's totally normal for Russians to house money outside of Russia, said Louisa Shelley, who directs the directs of terrorism, Transactional Crime and Corruption Center at George Mason University. And while U.S. real estate has long been a haven for foreign investment, Russians could also move money to other countries that have not imposed sanctions. For instance, the Israeli business news publication Calculist 
reports that lawyers in family offices are seeing a surge of interest from Russians seeking to invest in Israel, which has long connections to Soviet-born developers such as Liv Levine's African Israel. The U.S. government has also announced it would crack down on golden passports, likely a reference to the EB-5 visa program that provides foreign investors the opportunity for a green card in exchange for financing U.S. businesses, frequently commercial real estate developments. The program will be shut off to Russian investors for some time, but other countries that offer actual citizenship in exchange for investment remain an option. The U.S. government has thus far focused much of its attention on assets held by Russian oligarchs. With President Joe Biden announcing Tuesday the, the formation of a federal task force to find and seize their ill-begotten gains, oligarchs be warned, we will use every tool to freeze and seize your criminal proceeds, wrote U.S. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco in a statement Wednesday. But finding those assets will be easier said than done. Dirty money is a gas, said Casey. If you push it one way, it will go another. Mm-hmm.